It's pack. Pro-pack. So I'll pilot, say... Pro-pack. Pro pl pl Let me just look at that. Yeah. What can we put in that slot? <laughs> Sounds like a question to be asked. <laughs> <laughs> Need to breathe. And then obviously when you get to your destination, you can just get your phone out, call the fire brigade, they can cut the roof off. Some hey. homeless person's left their clothes in okay, here. Okay, keep it behind Joe. It's like a limousine. I always see it like this. You need to pull it out of the way. <laughs> oh no, not another Tesla versus Polestar review. Well, this one will be a little bit different. Let me explain why. Um, firstly, I've been a Tesla owner for five years. So what does somebody who's owned a Tesla for five years think of the Polestar? Secondly, well, actually, well, when I first drove a Polestar a few months ago, it didn't really win me over. Now, I did make a video, but it seemed a bit negative and I wanted to give it a bit more of a try. So to give it more of a try, I bought this car, we've been running it, and then we're going to see how that compares with a bit more knowledge about it, just to give it a fair chance. And thirdly, it's always been down to opinion. So I'm gonna bring in my colleague, Joe, who prefers the Polestar to the Tesla. So let's give you the full story. Keep watching, we'll get straight into it. This Polestar 2 is the dual motor with the 78 kilowatt hour battery pack. And it has the plus pack and the pilot pack, but not the sports pack. So I mentioned last time that I was a bit, not unimpressed isn't the word, but just not really bowled over by the Polestar 2 when I drove it. But that was a few months ago and things have changed. The good thing about electric cars is that we can see continuous software updates that can improve certain things, including range, charging speed. And there were two of my main criticisms before. 78 kilowatt hour in battery, like in this car, dual motor. And I really before got 200 miles out of it at tops. And that was disappointing compared to a Model 3 long range, which should easily go over 250 miles. So it just wasn't as efficient and it's charging just wasn't as fast it was okay but just not as fast however those both improved so i'm looking forward to testing this more and seeing what differences we have now this car's had this what i call a february 21 update which brought quite a few improvements to it and i'm sure it will continue to improve as well so that's great to see one of the little thing i noticed before was that the throttle wasn't very progressive it was sort of gentle 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 fast uh, it's a quick car as well but it just wasn't smooth I think they must have done something with that because I now find it way more progressive all the way through. So a big improvement there and that's really good. So this one doesn't have the performance pack like the other car I drove and I think it's better for it. it see, the trouble before is uh, it didn't have any advantage over the Model 3. It was, I don't think it was any quieter, I don't think it was any smoother. Uh, it wasn't particularly more refined and it well, certainly wasn't as dynamic so it didn't sort of have for me the, the sort of tick boxes to make it a different or better car than the Model 3 but this car without the performance pack I think is better for it. It is now a more mature car, more refined, um, it's a bit smoother than a Model 3 long range, um, certainly smoother than the Model 3 performance so now it just kind of has that kind of refinement and maturity to it that um, you know, over a Model 3 that I think it didn't have before. So again, I'm winning myself over a little bit more the more I drive this Pulsar 2. It's a very good car. It gets rave reviews from everybody. You can see why. It's just down to personal preference and taste. So that's why, for me, at the end of the day, I can say it's a really great car. I do love it. For me personally though, Model 3 does trump it because it has probably more the dynamics I prefer and it is more efficient, it does charge faster and the Tesla Supercharger Network makes it easier if you're doing lots of long distance travel. But it's a fantastic car, each person has their different preferences. So let's get Joe in, involved and we'll go through the bits and pieces that each of us like and don't like about the Pulsar 2 compared to the Model 3. Right, what I would say about the Polestar is not all the things are standard. This has got a couple of packs on it. It's not got the performance pack, which I think is better for it, to be honest. What does it have, Joe? Well, it's got two packs. We'll start with the plus pack. The plus pack is a £4,000 option. Uh, includes a heat pump. That's standard on all the new Model 3s okay, now. Okay, cool. It includes the uh, fixed panoramic glass sunroof. Standard on all Model 3s. Yeah, but I have also got a uh, projected Polestar symbol so you haven't got that and that's really Don't need useful. that. Well, that's a matter of opinion. I really Don't like it. it. Uh, Harman Kardon premium sound. Long range and performance got premium sound. 
It has to be said though, I think the Polestar does trump it with that upgraded sound system, yep. which can, yep. anyway, they're both, um, they're both very good. The Model 3 standard range has a slightly more basic audio, but still yeah. pretty good, really. We'll, grit, we'll sort of gloss over this, but this has got Weave Tech um, smart fabric and de what is it? Black ash decor inlays. Mm. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> this has got white inlay or wood inlay. <laughs> Don't like the wood inlay, but that's easily Black changed. Black or white, simple. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, power seats for the front passengers with lumbar support standard. and memory. Um, standard. Two memory settings. I think you, Trump, you could have quite a lot of driver Ten profiles or something. on there. Yeah, yeah that's standard. right. Uh, heated rear seats, heated front seats, heated steering wheel, and heated wiper blades. Heated front seat standard, heated rear seats with a long range, and now a heated steering wheel on the latest Model 3s, okay. but not the previous one, if it's a long range performance. Grocery bag holder. It's got a boot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then uh, tinted rear window. Uh, it's tinted, yeah. We often make them darker tint. See how yeah. the video about that. But yeah. This is tinted to the same sort of degrees of roof for that seamless look. But so we call it neutral on that. Okay, yeah. you have to get okay. another pack then to get some of the other bits. What have you got? Uh, yeah, the other pack that we've got, which is three thousand pounds, is the pilot pack, and that includes the Pixel LED headlights. This has Pixel LED headlights as well, and what we think is they're not dynamic oh, at the moment. These though. ones are working. Yeah, the Pulsar headlights are very good. Um, it has to be said, the Pulsar headlights, I think, are better. The latest Tesla ones, I think we're going to be seeing some software improvements to make yeah. them dynamic and do yeah. some more stuff. So I think we will see <coughs> some improvement with these, yeah. Because it's got dynamic steering uh, I'll give them the well. headlight yeah, drop at the you, moment. I think I'll, that's give you, fair. I'll give you that one. Okay. Uh, a 360 camera for parking? No. But I really don't like it. I don't think it's very good. This has got a really good clear rear view camera and then it uses the cameras on the side for an extra view down the side of the car. I think this is better, to be honest. You can select the rear view, but you have to kind of go on the screen. The 360 thing just doesn't work. Yeah, I'm a, I have to admit, I th yeah, I'm with you on that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, automatically dimmed exterior mirrors. Well, I know you've got that. Yeah, yeah I know you've got that. That's part of a pack. That's okay. part of a yeah. pack, yeah. Yeah, um, you get wheels and standard. then this has got driver awareness with blind spot information system, steering assist, cross traffic alert with brake support and rear collision warning and mitigation. The Tesla has a raft of safety systems. A raft? As standard. <laughs> a plethora. <laughs> um, <clears throat> automatic braking, emergency systems, lane keeping, radar, cruise control as standard. Then you can upgrade to the full autopilot system, yeah. self parking and such like. But that's all part of a pack. That's part of a £3,000 mm, okay. pack. So yeah. in terms of standard safety features, Tesla win. And they trade, weird, I didn't it? Because so, they've yeah. traded on safety features hugely. And this is not a Volvo, but imagine if it was. <laughs> That company have spent a lot of time on safety and autonomy. Yeah. Um, hey, but obviously they're nothing to do with each other. Which is more to get adaptive crews and the lane keeping system. Yeah. And I have to say that lane keeping system, mm, Tesla's better. Yeah. I yeah, think, I you know, it does a reasonable job yeah. in line with a lot of the other manufacturers. So a few packs on that. Let's just show a few more things inside, outside, what we like, what we don't yeah, like. Of Mine's better than yours, I think. Well, that's you what know. you think. Yeah, but, you know. Check out my shoes there. They're better than his. Joe, let's, uh, let's have a look in your frunk space. Yes, of course. <laughs> Be my guest. Junk in the frunk. How much junk is in my frunk? Well, my frunk contains a charging cable and I could probably get three or four cans of baked beans. Uh, maybe my lunch in here. There is some other stuff under here as well. Under this tray, you've got the warning triangle, puncher thing, locking wheel nut, or whatever it is. Rich has got way more space in his frunk. Yeah, We're I, could get, I could get more Richard's junk in my frunk, frunk but yeah. there could be more junk in my frunk, slightly bigger. Um, and we were just saying, actually, kind of, you have to open that like a normal bonnet. Yeah, you've got pull to get a lever in the car and, and then pull a little flap. This yeah. one is a button on screen and it pops yeah. open. And so that's more usable, I think, more practical, actually. Yeah. Newer Model 3s have a power tailgate. So does the Pulsar. Three, two, one, go. Come on, Model 3. No, mine was open first. Easy. What I don't have... No foot gesture control, which the Polestar does. Maybe issues. Let's compare a bit of boot space. So, should we start with a Tesla Model S? Because if you need a hatchback, it needs to be a Tesla Model S, really. This is my car I'm using at the moment. And I happen to have some stuff in here, genuinely, that I bought in this morning. 
table and chairs for sitting outside. Oh, cool. Can you fill that in? Hold on a minute. You, have I now got to work outside? Is that how annoying I am? <laughs> I've just got, I'm just going to be sat outside all weathers. Can you fill that in? Yeah, man, I'll fit this in, no problem. See, no worries. Um, Not as big as a Model S. So let's try the Model 3 now to compare. Now, it's a shame it's not a hatchback. It would be really good. Yeah, Does that fit just as easy? No. No, don't go in, Rich. <laughs> easy. Actually, it's not as wide as the Polestar by a touch. It is actually similar floor space and actually a similar height. But you can't put a dog in there. It'd be too dark. Well, you could put the dog in there. But that would be cruel, wouldn't it? <laughs> would not advocate putting a dog in there. What's this ugly thing all around here? What's that all about? Wing mirror. Yeah, no, but why have you got this extra... What? Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Keeps the rain off. Frameless. I'll give you that. I like the frameless mirrors. They're nice. It's got that blind spot indicator thing in my jig in there as well, which is what. What about cool. door handles? I mean, these yeah. are like an industrial safe or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but these you need three hands to open. I like how flush they are. I like the design of these. Sometimes it can be a little bit awkward. For example, my daughter with small hands, something in her hand. She goes, oh, "Dad, can you open the door?" Yeah. Um, but I prefer to look at these. So I personally prefer the Model 3 minimal interior, but I will admit this is a nice modern place to be. Nice different mixture of materials and finishes. It feels smart and modern. The seats are comfortable. We have an adjustable seat base here, which you don't have with the Model 3. I like the screen interface there. This screen interface here is very good and probably on a par with the Model 3. It's nice. Yeah, I have to say it's a nice place. Um, Criticisms for me are definitely lack of storage. Um, we still have this gloss center console here, which is gonna get scratched. And this material on the doors here, I'd like to see how this wears in a couple of years time. You know, I just kind of pictured that wearing a little bit with people's arms on the door there, especially with sun cream on in the summer type of thing. Um, but yeah, nice place, just a different style. Behind me, the space is okay and what is different is that the gap between the seat base and the floor is a little bit more than the Tesla, so my knees aren't quite upright as much. But when I sit behind Joe, Joe, go to your seating position. You sure, can you reach pedals? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, with Joe's position, there's loads of room, easy. My main bugs in the driving position here really is this, this center console, my knees just banging on that constantly, and then, on a long drive, you, I like to put my foot out and stretch it, but there's not enough gap between the brake pedal and the footrest to do that. So I found myself on longer journeys getting a bit fidgety in this car. Seats are nice, materials are nice. But what I would say in the back is the headroom's not brilliant. I'm on the ceiling and then this is just kind of right in my face. We tried getting three people in the back here and I was like this. Um, so that's a no-go. In the Model 3, I love how simple the interior is. It's nice and open, plenty of room to stretch out. The dash is much lower. I feel like it's much more open with much more space. And I think it's a great seating and driving position with great visibility. So in the back of the Model 3 behind my seating position, it's okay for knee space, but it just has the test of thing where the floor and the seat base are quite close together. So my knees are quite upright. Joe doesn't have that problem. And what I would say is my front seat low, I can't really get my feet under the front seat either. So we come up to this end. This is still there, but it's not as intrusive as it is on the Polestar. I've got more headroom because of the glass roof. It's all the way back. And this, although it still comes a little bit low for me, isn't as bad as the Polestar. So this one does have the Harman Kardon. Now, this is really a divided opinion. Some say the sound is better in this, but actually our other colleagues have said that the sound is better in a Tesla Model 3 long range of mm. performance. So they're both good down to nitpicking on preference, I think. My driving position, uh, I find it absolutely fine. I don't have the same need to move my legs around. Rich has got that restless leg syndrome thing, I think. In the Model 3, you get dual wireless chargers here and loads of nice cubby space. Big, deep recess there, big, deep recess there. USB-Cs, cup holders, the right height for this armrest. It's great. Why do people still put black, shiny trims know. on the dash? That's already getting scratched. Anyway, what's this slot for anyway? This is like your centre console storage. 
It's any good as a phone. Hmm. Can't get your sunglasses in there. There's another slot, I don't know what it's for. Up here. I don't think that's going to work either. Have you got any other slots? Uh, are there any slots in the back? There's door slots that are a bit more useful, but even then a big bottle won't fit in. Why are you looking at me funny? Waiting for you to go, have you got one of these? And I'll go, yeah, well actually I can go one better than that. <laughs> yeah, have you got one of these? Well actually, uh, <laughs> what elbow holders? <laughs> this one's got two elbow holders in the back. I'll tell you what I have got in the Polestar, what are you going to do with your skis then? But in the Polestar, I still have two elbow rests here, um, but we also have a Joe hatch for putting yeah. Joe things in <laughs> called skis. Yeah. Creepy. I like this little vent click here. It's kind of satisfying. Little bits like that are nice. But then I like the way the Tesla Model 3 vents work even better. So in the Polestar, the uh, center console has more customizable features. You can download apps download things like a better route plan which you can add waypoints to and you can plan a more complex journey the tests are really strictly a to b um, even though it does use a google maps format uh, you've got your google account you can sign into uh, and your spotify account and various other things and you've also got the google assistant so you can give this a lot of voice controls a lot of controls that exist on the tesla also exist on here it works better on here for voice control yeah it? it's really really slick actually um, gonna have apple carplay soon that's coming as part of the software update program so just like a tesla it will evolve over time through software updates loads of nice design features on the polestar 2 the headlamps inspired by origami the Polestar uses LED lighting technology throughout, like many manufacturers. It's efficient, it's got excellent lighting, and it uses less energy. And they've taken that to the next level with the rear lights on the car. There are 288 LEDs in here. They can glow and they sense the ambient lighting. They can glow more strongly on a sunny day. Uh, if it's not required, then they can grow more dimly. Uh, the idea being that they are more visible, but they can also be more efficient and save energy. A real detail, I think, when it comes down to energy saving. So there we go, mixed opinion. Seems a bit inconclusive, doesn't it, really? But it really is down to personal preferences and I think how you're gonna use the car as well. So for Joe, he has a slight preference over the Polestar. I think it suits him, his style, and how he drives. For me, though, the Tesla Model 3 still trumps it by a little bit i think especially if it comes to range charging speed the tesla certainly has the advantage there and for the way it drives and the feel in the cabin again it's just slightly my preference but many will prefer the polestar so if you're considering both i think it's worth trying both it all depends on your choices and what's important to you um, so i hope that's useful thank you for watching we will do more with the polestar on range and efficiency this dual motor 78 kilowatt hour with those two packs is probably my preference because it has the right combination. There are smaller battery packs and a two wheel drive version coming out soon. So we'd like to see how those compare. Maybe we can get our hands on one of them. But anyway, we'll wrap this up for now. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram as well.